Yeah, sure. Uh, Carlos, uh, welcome to the team. Welcome to Seattle. Uh, just what made this a good fit for you? Why, why join the Seahawks? Um, I mean, it's been a it's it's been a place that I've always wanted to play ever since I I left San Francisco. Um, just you know, going against the guys for you know four years of my time being in San Fran. Um, I just seen you know how they always ran the ball all the way back to when Marshawn was there. You know how they was a big running team, um, and you know the ways they ran the ball. I just felt like you know it was you know a, a strength of my game. You know you see a lot of gun runs. I did a lot of gun runs when I was coming out of coming out of uh, college. Um, did a little bit more with Chip. Uh, did a lot more. You know this past season with uh, with Houston, and um, you know and I had good results from there. I had my first Thursday. First Thursday, thousand, uh, thousand yard season, um, and yeah, and it also gives me an opportunity to be closer to my son and my girl. They both live in the Bay Area, so you know I get to go there once once a year, and they they can come visit me a lot easier. Greg Bell. Hi, Carlos. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. I know you just got here. Were you on the calls with the team last week? Um, I I was on a few of them. What were your impressions of? They told us how intense those conversations were, based on what you learned last week in talking about the players and, and what our social climate is in our country, and what you know about the Seahawks and their players. Uh, what have you oh. learned about the environment and, and and what how these guys are about this? I wasn't. I wasn't. I didn't make that that Zoom call when they had the when they had a discussion about you know what's going on in this world. I, I missed that one. Um, just by you know looking on social media, you know I've seen some guys speak about it. You know uh, I've seen Russ speak about it. I've seen. Uh, I want. I want to. I think it was KJ, one of the linebackers. But I've seen one of the linebackers speak about it also. But I wasn't. On the Zoom call when the, when the team had it, though. Do you think that this season is going to bring more protest? Do you plan on protesting, and do you think that's the time is now for that in the league? Um, is it going to bring more protests? I mean, I'm not sure. Um, I don't really know. Uh, I wasn't really a guy who was part of the protests when it when it was going on. Um, do I plan on protesting? No, I don't plan on protesting, but if it's something that the team wants to do and our, our team decides as a team we're going to protest together, then, you know, I'm with I'm with the team at all times. And finally, what worked for you in Houston last year? What what was the fit there and, and why didn't you return there? Uh, what worked for me in Houston? Um, what worked for me in Houston? Um it was kind of I got traded in week one, so I, I never I never was able I never learned the full offense like the rest of the guys. I was just learning bits and pieces. I pretty much was just learning the game plan for the week, which is you know a lot easier than having to learn a whole playbook. Um, so it was easier for me to just you know to dial in. Um, I knew I wasn't gonna have to know every every play. Uh, I knew they was gonna have Duke in on third down, so it was easier for me to you know lock in on what I had to do. I knew they wanted me to be a runner, uh, not so much in a passing game. So I knew that all, all I had to do was focus on was being a runner. And, you know, that's that's part of my job is being a runner. So that was an easy thing to do. And while I didn't stay in Houston, you know, things just didn't work out. You know, I had opportunity to, to maybe stay in Houston, but, you know, we just didn't see eye to eye on things and it, it didn't work out. Thank you. Corbin Smith. Hi, Carlos. Welcome to Seattle. I know that you had shoulder surgery recently. Um, you've had surgery in the past coming off seasons as well. Has the COVID-19 situation complica complicated your rehab? And what's the timetable looking like for you to be ready to play? Uh, it really hasn't complicated my rehab at all. Uh, my rehab guy actually comes to me and, uh, I do rehab at my house when I'm back in Miami. Here in uh, Houston, things are things are open, 
So I was able to go to to a rehab facility here and uh, do my rehab. So the COVID hasn't really stopped my rehab at all. Um, and when, I think I'm on time, you know, to to participate, you know, when we get the camp and everything. And by week one, I'm pretty sure I'll be ready to go. You know, I, I feel good and I, I feel like my shoulder has gotten a lot stronger than what it was feeling before I got the surgery. Um, so, yeah, things are definitely going in the right direction with my shoulder. Non-football question here real quick. Pacific Northwest is a great place for outdoorsmen. I've read and seen pictures about your fishing exploits. Have you had a chance yet to look into any rivers, lakes, maybe open water fishing that you'll be able to pursue as an angler here? Uh, I haven't. I haven't. I haven't haven't had the opportunity uh, to really, you know, find out more information on that. But I'm going to definitely, you know, find out more because, you know, I love to fish, so. That'd be something different. Maybe I can go like uh, the one fishing, uh, like the one where they sit in the water. I don't even see. I don't even fly know that fishing. one. <laughs> fly fishing. Yeah, <laughs> you know I could do fly fishing up that way. I'm used to deep sea fishing. You know, I like to, I like to catch big stuff my size. <laughs> Thanks, Carlos. Yeah, no problem. And Jim Mueller. Well, Carlos, you played football a long time. You've had a lot of success, but I would imagine there's a few nerves when you join a new team. What are you most anxious about? It's always, you know, it's always a few nerves. It's like, you know, uh, your first day of school at a new school. You know, you got to make all new friends and, you know, kind of feel a vibe out. Uh, What I'm more anxious about is just uh, being in, actually getting on the field. You know, just getting on the field, actually hearing the play call from the quarterback, you know, and just um, just being a part of it, just, you know, putting on my helmet and stuff, actually knowing that, I, you know, I'm part of, this, part of the Seahawks. Thanks, Carlos. You're welcome. How about Art Teal? Hi, Carlos. Um, <clears throat> last Friday, uh, about a dozen NFL players put together a 70-second video that uh, made a request to the NFL and Commissioner Roger Goodell to uh, acknowledge the racism and a number of other issues in a very direct fashion. Goodell complied. I'm wondering if you saw that and what your reaction was to it and what you may have heard from other players around the league about the significance of that. Uh, you said it was a video they posted? Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I did, I did yeah. Yeah, it was like Michael Michael Thomas and all of them. They was right. they was naming the they was naming the people who got who got murdered. Um how do you say how do I feel about it? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it's you know, it's a good thing, you know. I think it's positive. It's some, you know, to be put out there. Um you know, I, I agree with the guys, you know, I agree with this what they're saying, you know. Um Things definitely need to change. Um, so, uh, I mean, I agree 100% with what they're saying. Uh, have I heard from any guys? No, I haven't personally heard from any guys. Nico Marino. Uh, hey, Carlo, welcome back. Uh, welcome, Seattle. I mean, uh, obviously, uh, it's different now with. The Zoom calls, but have you been able to talk to any of the other guys from the running back group? And uh, what are your thoughts uh, on on that, both on a competitive aspect as well as a personal aspect? I haven't talked to any of the guys personally, but um, you know we deal, we we do have our our Zoom meetings with just the running backs, and uh, you know I introduce myself to the guys, and you know they introduce themselves, and um, you know just. Guys looking forward to, you know, competing. Um, it's definitely going to be competition, you know, with Carson and Penny, guys that's already been there, you know, that's already established. Um, so you definitely got to come in and compete. You know, you're trying to come in and take, take a guy's job that's already been there. Um, Carson, you know, he's been putting up a 1,000 yards like uh, like it's nothing, you know, each year. So it's definitely, you know, tough coming in and trying to, you know, replace a guy like that. But um, I'm definitely open to the competition, you know, it's not my first year in the league, you know, I'm going on year seven. So I'm used to competing. Um, you know, it brings out the best of me. So, you know, I'm looking forward to it. 
and coming into this uh, that same way? I mean, are you going to just uh, battle for like a, a every down type of job or are you willing to just do a little bit of everything? You know, whatever, you know, it boils down to or whatever coach, you know, asks me, you know, this is this is what we need you to do. You know, I'm all for it. But, uh, you know, I'm coming in, you know, right now, you know, with the mindset, I'm trying to be that guy, you know, every down back, you know, um, you know, be the guy for that team, for the, for the team. And one, one football question, just real quick. I noticed your uh, handle on Twitter is Wapo. Any type of Spanish uh, influence in your life? Do you speak any Spanish at all? No, no Espanol. No Espanol. Okay, that's all good. Curtis Crabtree. Poquito. <laughs> a little bit. Hey, Carlos. I was curious. Uh, you played one year with uh, Mike Solari as the line coach in San Francisco. How, how much of a factor did that was that in the familiarity and, and bringing him to Seattle, knowing he was going to be here and learning curve might be a little. You know, um, you know, I just I just found out recently that Solari was. The coach, O line coach. Um, <laughs> you know, I found out was because I I was on Zoom and um, I was going through the screens and I'm like, wait, that's Coach Lowry. <laughs> so I didn't even know. But um, it's for me, it's like you know, good to see a familiar face. I'm sure he he had something to do with me uh, coming in uh, to Seattle. Um, it's been a while, you know, since I've been around Coach Lowry. You know, I've I've been around a bunch of coaches, you know, since I left San Fran. So it's been a while, but, you know, um, yeah, I, just, I haven't seen him in a while. So, you know, it's been a while. I, I got to I gotta say what's up to him when I get there. Thanks, Carlos. Chris Francis. Hey, Carlos, thanks for uh, talking to us. I want to go back to Art's question real quick about the protests and, and the NFL and stuff. I'm, I'm just curious uh, what you think the league needs to do to change their perception on race and relations and things like that, as obviously they've been behind the curve until now. I'm curious what you think they can do. Uh, what can the NFL do? The NFL, can, I think the NFL can start by signing the cap back. I think if they sign cap back, that uh, that'll show that they really trying to move in a different direction. Um, because um, Cat was making a statement four years ago um, about what's going on in today's world, and um, the NFL didn't bother to listen to him then. Um, so I think they should start by doing that. Um, after that, you know, I'm not really sure. You know what the NFL can do. I see they they said they was donating money. Honestly, I'm I'm not. I can't really give you a, a good answer on what the NFL needs to do. I think it's uh, it's something. The racism in this world is deep rooted in this in its in this world. I don't think what the the NFL is going to change anything with that. Um, so I personally, I, I really don't know. I just know they can sign cap. That's one thing that was wrong. Did you? Uh... Carlos, did you get to hear Roger Goodell's response? Did you, what did you think of that in terms of we were wrong, we were wrong on not listening to players and things like that? I, I, I'm just I'm just trying to get to the point where what the players think about whether this will actually change at all. Uh, will it change? I guess time will tell. Honestly, we can just sit back and you know we continue. Um, sit back and wait and, you know, see if things do change. And I don't, I don't really have the answers for it, you know, and I don't really have conversations with other players about it. You know, I talk to my family about it, but they got different, different opinions than what an a NFL player would be thinking about. So I really don't have an answer for it. Thanks, man. Bob Condota. Um, hi, Carlos. Yeah, like everybody, uh, uh, welcome to Seattle. Uh, just on your shoulder, you you played through this all of last season, or did this go back? Or, or I guess what just what exactly what happened with your shoulder last year? I played I played with it all season. I hurt my shoulder in week two. Okay, was that? Was that sorry, was that, was that difficult to to play with? Or uh, at the moment when I first heard it, I thought it was difficult to play with, but um, man, hold up. Somebody, my mom's calling. 
I don't want to. Just don't touch it. All right. Can you hear me? There you go. You're back. Okay. All right. Um, at, at, for the moment, I thought it was going to be difficult. Like going into next, like week three, I thought it, my shoulder would have been bothering me. Um, but no, I didn't have any setbacks with it. You know, I just kind of played through it. I would wrap it up. And I figured if I ran hard, if I ran hard enough, then nobody can hit me in my shoulder. So I just thought I just needed to run harder. And uh, you didn't obviously sign sort, sort of late in the game. Was, was the shoulder a reason for that or just the weird off season or would it just have happened anyway? Or Say it again. In terms of how you, you, you signed sort of late in the game, I guess, in terms of free agency, you had to wait a little while to sign. Was it was that due to the shoulder and, and not being able to go places or, or was there some other reason for yeah, that? Yeah, I think I think it was I think it was because of my shoulder and and with the restrictions uh, in each state. So I, the, the whole coronavirus kind of just, you know, put a setback with my shoulder. Great. Thank you very much. Brady, Brady Henderson. Hi, Carlos. Uh, nice talking with you. I, I'm wondering if you could take us back to, um, you mentioned Kaepernick protesting and how you were there. Can you just take us back to um, what it was like when, when that started and what it was like for you being as close to that as you were? Um, <laughs> well, we was, we was a pretty bad team. We wasn't winning that many games. Um, that's what I, re that's what I remember the most. Um, then I remember, you know, Cap making his his peaceful protest, and you know I was all for it. You know, I understand the message he was putting out, and you know, and I understood because I I came from you know Cincinnati, Ohio, um, Lincoln Heights in Cincinnati. You know, it's not a, the the best area, and um, you know I I would see that you know police brutality, um, I, you know pretty much everybody in the neighborhood is struggling. You know, you see violence, drugs, all that. You know, I'm just, there's no opportunity there. You know, I was fortunate enough to have my grandmother live in Naples, Florida. So I was, I was able to get away from all that and pretty much like start my life over. Um, but everybody, you know, is not fortunate. And I have grandparents that live other places. Um, so with that, you know, I was all for, you know, what, what kept what he was saying, his message. I was, I was for it. I'm still for it. Um, but I, I just remember that we, we wasn't a good team. And, you know, I wasn't happy about that part because, you know, I wanted to win, you know, and I was tired of losing. So, you know, I was more worried about how can we win. You know, I wasn't really paying too much attention about, you know, what Cap, what Cap had going on. Did, did you have um, many conversations with him or other players in the locker room just about what he was protesting? No, I never had a conversation with Kev about what he was protesting. You know, I've, I've listened to him, you know, what he's what he was protesting about. And, um, you know, that that's all I needed to hear, you know. Um, that that's way that was that's a decision he was he was making and that's that's where he wanted to go, you know. Um that was his decision, you know. I, I had to still worry about football. You know, I was I wanted to win. We still had a season to play. And uh, last one, when did you move from Ohio to uh, Florida? I moved it when I was 14. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Joe Fan. Hey, Los, uh You might have just touched on it a little bit, but um, just curious if uh, John or Pete, well, when, you know, when you signed, outlined any sort of vision for how they want the backfield to work with, um, with you and, and Chris and, and other guys, or if it's merely just a, an open competition that you guys will decide how it, how it gets played out. Um, it's probably an open competition for that second row. I don't think me personally, I don't think there there's probably an open competition for the starting row. I think everybody knows it's who the starting running back is for Seattle and that's Carson. Um, you know, and I, I knew that before even signing to Seattle that he was the guy. Um, but, you know, uh, would, would Coach Carroll change his mind? Uh, maybe. I don't I don't really know. But I know maybe the second spot is open. Um, maybe the first spot. You know, I'm, I'm going to come in and compete for the first spot. 
you know, make sure, you know, I solidify myself and, you know, go from there. I'm not really sure what's the plan.